Thank you, Kelly. Clearly, my reputation exceeds me. So. <laughs> Here's the water. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you very much. Um, at Social Object Factory, I have the distinct advantage of working with cartoonist Hugh McLeod. So I'm going to take full advantage of that relationship and pepper my presentation with lots of his awesome cartoons. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. So we'll start with this one. So how many people here have a mobile phone? I mean, so it should be a good crowd. <laughs> how many of you would feel comfortable leaving the house in the morning without your mobile? No. No. It's amazing. I mean, you know, clearly we live in a mobile world, right? But is a mobile world all about the phone? It's not just about the phone anymore. A few years ago I thought it was. Now it's different. I mean, it seems like the future of the phone is the future of the world, but I think the future of mobile goes way beyond the phone. Um, and actually Steve Jobs in January of 2010 when he introduced the first iPad, he referred to Apple as a mobile devices company. You know, from his perspective, iPods, MacBook laptops, the iPhone, of course the iPad, these were all mobile devices. And he proclaimed at that presentation that Apple was actually the world's largest manufacturer of mobile devices. Big change from the computer company they once were. And I tend to agree with what he was saying there. And the reason that all these devices are mobile devices is, is because they're all connected. And they're all connected because of this thing that Michelle referred to, the cloud, right? <laughs> the cloud keeps all these devices connected. And thanks to the cloud, the world really is like one big phone. Uh, last year, just about this time last year, October, Comscore came out with an interesting report called the Digital Omnivore. And it talks about how consumers today consume their media across multiple devices. We move back and forth between different devices, so it's not just a single device. Um, it started with the mobile phone. The mobile phone kind of set the tone, and it was the first device that gave us this sense that we could have an internet experience when we were away from our tethered desktops. Then the smartphone took it a step further. The smartphone with bigger screens and faster capabilities showed us that we can have a digital media experience away from our desktops, that we can consume digital media. And then it went beyond the smartphone to other connected devices. So now you have e-readers, you know, you have set-top boxes, you have tablets, you have all these devices that are wireless and connected and allow you to consume media away from your desktop. So all of these are mobile devices. Um, and again, back to the cloud, there's a lot of companies doing some really neat things with these devices. So these are three examples. If you've used, how many people have used Netflix on the streaming side, not just getting DVDs? And HBO Go, anyone use HBO Go? If you have HBO, if you're a subscriber to HBO, you should get HBO Go. It's great, it's free, you can use it on all your devices. And how many of you have read books, not necessarily on a Kindle, but using Kindle software and other devices? So all of these three services are great because what they do brilliantly is they keep your stuff, your content, in sync across those devices. So I could be at the gym on the treadmill, start watching a movie on Netflix, pause it when I'm done, go home, go into the kitchen to get a snack, pick up a tablet, continue watching that movie where I left off, finish my snack, pause it, go into the den, continue watching that movie on a 42-inch screen because I have you know, either a, a smart TV, or I have Apple TV, or Google TV, or a Roku box, or an Xbox 360, any number of set-top boxes that will give me internet access on the TV. And then I can go back into the bedroom and finish the rest of the movie in bed on another device. All seamlessly connected, thanks to the cloud. So that's great technology. It really is great technology. But Deb Schultz is a great speaker, and she says, technology changes, humans don't. Um, I don't agree with her 100%. I think that technology changes faster than humans do, but I do think that people adopt and change over time. Um, and I think that's really been the challenge for mobile. It hasn't been a technical issue. There's been great mobile technology for a long, long time. Um, but consumer adoption of that technology has taken longer. Consumer behavior, to change consumer behavior is a lot harder and takes much more time. So we've been talking about the year of mobile forever, you know, uh, and, and I feel bad because um, I go back before the chimp 
in Michelle's chart. So, you know, the chip, I think the chip was 2002. And I started in mobile in 1999, so I don't know, maybe I'm a tadpole, or I don't know. <laughs> what came before that chimp? I don't know, you know, not Neanderthal, you know. But anyway, back in 1999, which is, sounds like an awfully long time ago. I can't even remember what it was like to party like it was 1999. <laughs> but um, back in 1999, I co-founded a company called Barpoint.com, and we were early players in the mobile commerce space. And we had really neat technology. You could enter the barcode number for any product and instantly get back product-specific information on your mobile device. Um, reviews of the product, uh, comparative pricing information. For certain products, you could even purchase them right from your mobile phone. Or Actually, in those days, it wasn't a smartphone. It was a regular internet-connected mobile phone. Or it was a, a BlackBerry pager. Who knew that a BlackBerry was a pager before it was a mm -hmm. phone? Remember that? That's, a black, that's the original BlackBerry pager. And we also had it available on the Palm 7, which was the first wireless Palm Pilot. And actually, in many ways, that Palm 7 is, is really the precursor of the smartphones we have today, because it was really the first wireless device that had PDA capabilities and all these things that sort of turned into the smartphone of the day. So we had all this great technology. It was available on all these devices. We had deals with all the major carriers. You could get Barpoint on AT&T, Sprint, Nextel, Singular, Verizon. Great technology, great distribution. Probably three people used it. You know, we were just, just way ahead of our time. And people were just not comfortable doing these things on their mobile phone back then. So here we are, 2012. And all the things that we dreamed of back then are happening. Now you see QR codes everywhere. People are very comfortable whipping out their phones, scanning the codes, doing different things with it. So what changed? What, what changed between 1999 and 2012? Well, certainly, the smartphone got a lot smarter. Yeah. A lot smarter. You know, and that certainly helped. So the smartphone got bigger screens now. The data networks are faster. So as the smartphone got smarter, consumers became much more comfortable doing more things on their phone. They do things on their phone that people never dreamed they would do. Um, the one thing they don't do on their phone is talk. Anymore. That's the one thing we forgot to do. We don't do that on our phones anymore. And for some people, I mean, literally, we're addicted to our mobile devices, right? Um, part of the change, too, has to do with apps. You know, apps have really changed the way consumers behave with their mobile devices. And when you think about apps, in reality, all an app is, is a very nice and easy front end to a web-based service. It just, it's really purpose-driven. You know, you want to find a location, you open up a map. You want to find a restaurant, you open up Open Table or, or Yelp. You want to, you know, whatever it is you want to do, it's a very purpose-driven thing. And it made it very easy to use the phone because instead of having to type lots of characters and search through all this stuff, you find the icon, you tap it, boom, you're in. So apps were very a strong influence in changing mobile behavior. Uh, so much so that there's an enormous amount of apps now. There's 700,000 apps in iTunes. There's 600,000 in Google Play. Android's catching up fast. Uh, according to Comscore, 82% of smartphone users' consumption of media is happening through apps. We spend most of our time on our phones inside of an app. Uh, and Apple said that the average iOS user has 100 apps on their phone. Who has more than 100 apps on their phone here? I'm the only one? <laughs> come on, come on, are women in technology? <laughs> who, has, who, has, who thinks they have 100 apps on their phone? 50? 25? Okay. All right, all right. Um, and like the commercial says, no matter what it is you're looking for, there probably is an app for that. I have not tried the girlfriend now. <laughs> so with all this great stuff going on, why would I say that mobile is dead? Well, it's not dead, really. Uh, long live mobile. But it's changed. It's changed in ways that apps have had a lot to do with. When you think again about the apps, they're not just on phones anymore. Tablets have apps. If you have a Macintosh computer, you know the Mac App Store, your computer now has apps. The Windows 8 operating system devices coming out have an app store very similar to the Mac app store. Computers, so the computers have apps. Televisions have apps now. If you're buying a new TV today, you'd be hard pressed to find one that isn't internet connected. And if it isn't, 
for less than $100, you can get an Apple TV, a Roku box, any number of devices that will turn your TV into a connected TV. And on a connected TV, you access a lot of content using apps. Um, there are some people who predict that the, the future of television will no longer be around channels or stations, but apps. You want to watch Breaking Bad? Open up the Breaking Bad app and you're in. doesn't matter what channel it's on. You go to the app. Um, and we're moving in that direction, slowly but surely. So apps have really influenced that. And again, that couldn't have happened if it weren't for the fact that we're living in the cloud. The cloud has really made all of these devices connected, all of these devices mobile devices. So in that context, what's really important, it's not so much the device, but it's having access to your stuff across whatever device is most convenient at any, at any given time or any given moment. So what does this mean for you? What does this mean for businesses? What does this mean for marketers? One thing I think is important is mobile should not be stuck in a silo, right? Uh, in the early days of mobile, and Michelle probably you know, remembers this well, you know, everyone put mobile into a silo. Agencies had mobile practices and there were mobile planners and mobile budgets and just, you know, you had all of marketing over here and you had mobile <laughs> over here and ne'er the twain shall be. And um, that's a mistake because mobile, of all the types of platforms you can use for marketing, mobile is perhaps the most flexible because you can integrate mobile very easily in every other medium you use. We see billboards, <coughs> advertising, billboards that have text keywords in them, that have QR codes in them. You have TV shows. Michelle mentioned American Idol. TV shows use text messages all the time. Um, radio shows can announce, you know, text win to one, two, three, four, five. So you can easily integrate mobile into all types of media. So putting it in a silo is a mistake. Um, the other thing that this means for your business is you have to recognize and accept the fact that your business is being accessed on all of these devices. If you have a website, right now, people are accessing your website from a mobile phone, from a tablet, from a computer, from a television set. And the experience on each of those devices is very different. Some of them are much more intimate than others. When we look at stuff on our phone, it's generally a few inches from our face. A tablet might be at arm's length. The computer is across the desk. The TV is across the room when you're sitting on the couch. That changes the experience. It changes the marketing experience. It changes how the consumer engages with advertising and messaging. Um, touch screen devices changes it too. A phone and a tablet where people are touching it, feeling the screen, is very different from a mouse and a keyboard, very different from a television with a remote control. So as a marketer, as a business person, you have to match the experience of your messaging and your advertising with the experience of the device. Um, in the early days of mobile, a lot of companies figured, all right, well, it's digital. It's just another form of digital marketing. We'll take these digital assets that we created for web advertising and we'll just make them smaller and squeeze them and put them in this size so that they fit on the mobile device and now we're doing mobile advertising. Big mistake. You know, you really need to create your assets from the ground up for the device and for the way they're going to be consumed. If it's a touch screen device, the creative should invite people to touch it, right? It's not click, it's touches, right? It's taps. Um, so that's something that a lot of people don't take the time to think about, and I think it's really important to effectively represent your company or your brand or your marketing. You have to think of a way to be consistent across all platforms, while at the same time deliver an experience that makes sense for the platform where it's being consumed. And it's, it's a challenge, and it's one of the things that's held back um, mobile advertising in many cases because people are doing it wrong. Um, as I often say in the class that Kelly mentioned, I teach, um, you don't need to have a mobile marketing strategy, in my opinion. What you do need to have is a marketing strategy that deeply integrates mobile into everything you're doing. And again, when I talk about mobile, I'm talking about all of these different mobile devices. So, in closing, what is this hold for the future? I mean, I still, I'm an optimist. I still believe that the year of mobile will come. Perhaps it'll be 2025. And if it takes that long, instead of me, the tadpole, or us chimps and people enjoying it, perhaps it'll be one of our robot overlords who will be enjoying uh, the year of the mobile. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.